A very good evening and welcome to this edition of the Fourth Estate. Charles Mangushampak is my name. Just last week, new debate raged, sparked by McCain Basel lecturer Stella Nyanzi over her exchange with First Lady Janet Museveni. And some of the questions raised is the question of the new front line of gender, uh, the, the gender struggle, the questions raised about uh, provisions for girls, especially those in primary schools, um, uh, sanitary towels for them, and other critical questions. We ask the question tonight. What, uh, looking at it from the gender perspective, is this the new gender uh, front line? Is this the new front line? Um, uh, and um, my guest tonight, let me start with. Uh, uh, Ona Peter is not a guest, he's part of the show. <laughs> Ona Peter Ekomoloit, uh, Corporate Affairs <coughs> Director of uh, Nile Breweries, AB Inbev. Good evening, Charles, and welcome to our guests. And good evening, viewers. Doreen Kanyesuje is a lawyer and motivational speaker. Doreen, very nice to have you. Thank you. Good evening. And Eunice Musime. Eunice Musime makes appearances here and then disappears and then comes back sometimes. <laughs> Eunice, very nice to have you. Thank you. Eunice Musime is the Executive Director at Akina Mama Wa Africa and will be joined by one of uh, the former regulars of this show um, as we move on with the discussion. I want to start with you, Eunice Musime. And that's the question. The, there has been major debate for some time now that who are the new uh, who are the new headliners, who are the new champions of gender activism in this country? Uh, thank you, Charles. Ah, who are the new champions? One, I think we must say there are so many unsung heroes, gender champions at lower levels, at um, intermediate levels, at national level that are doing great work for gender equality, that are not getting the same visibility, are not getting the same profiling, are not getting the same media attention as those who would want to call gender champions. Mm. So there are so many unsung heroes. And so this focus on just a few because maybe they are radical or they are liberal does not mean that they are not great women and great men. And what we've done as the women's movement, each year when we have the women's movement, we, we try to profile mm -hmm. some of those gender champions, especially at lower levels, that are doing great work, transforming society, but do not get the same media space as women at the national level. Mm -hmm. And that's why sometimes our struggle has been called elitist, because mm -hmm. they see women at national level and they don't see those who are actually transforming at those other levels. The people who watched or who followed the, the Facebook battle that Stella Nyanzi launched, Dr. Stella Nyanzi launched the other day, um, were looking at it and saying, uh, s s s some, some looked at it and said, she's raising fundamental issues. The debate that followed, some, a majority of the people who have commented about what she said, supported, support what she said, but disagree with the language she uses. And some have said, you see, there are no people to speak about these issues, especially the women. Because you have a critical issue called uh, sanitary towels for girls, promised in the middle of the campaign, mm -hmm. not delivered on, but very few people have been able to raise this issue to where it should be. Why? I think um, what is lacking in the debate is the context. Uh, not enough focus is on the context of uh, this debate. What are the conditions that have created a Stella Nyanzi, if you like to say? Uh, the poverty levels in this country. Last week, one of the NGOs, Oxfam and NGO Forum, released a report on inequality. Um, UNICEF recently also did a study where it, it found that the reason why girls are still dropping out of school is an issue of poverty. So focusing on pads for girls or menstrual health management loses the bigger questions of the day, which is poverty in the country, inequality. I mean, which but mother you, would you, not you, want you, you've to... You've spent years discussing mm. poverty in the country. Yeah. And w we're getting nowhere about it. A I would actually, as Oxfam mm. says, mm. the gap between the rich and the poor is growing <coughs> wider. And that's where the we need to focus. The biggest victims of this poverty are women and girls. 
Yeah, women and girls. And yes. that's where we need to focus. That's where we need to focus. What are our macroeconomic policies? Are they actually transforming society? Are we addressing the structural barriers to transformation? Are we um, are the macro issues speaking to the micro issues? So those are the questions which we need to be focusing on. And we need more people actually having those conversations. But now, of course, the challenge is also the space. The space for political engagement is shrinking, and that's why you actually are, are getting more and more tellers who are becoming more radical. When I joined the civil society, there was a bit more space to engage with government, to engage with other actors, but now that space has been closed down, it has been shut down. So what happens is that people become extreme, they become radical, because that space for engagement is not there. Dere, so, sorry, yeah. Dere, would you describe mm -hmm. Stella Nyanze as radical? Well, radical in the mode with which she actually aired her views. Mm -hmm. And l let me just say this, that, you know, every society will always have its issues. Mm -hmm. Every society, in spite of how developed they might be, right? Mm -hmm. Really the question is, how are we going to teach our children to learn how to air out these issues, right? Mm -hmm. That's the ultimate question. And, <coughs> I mean, we have two presidents who have agreed, I mean, Ronald Reagan, Abdul Kalam, all agreed to the fact that ethics, Values are the foundation of any viable society. Mm -hmm. Period. So without us adhering to ethics and values, it's very impossible for us to build, you know, a very strong foundation. In fact, another philosopher said, um, I think her name was um, Goldman Emma. Mm -hmm. Emma, she said, a polit uh, German political activist. She said that if any society does not adhere to values, to ethics, right? then that society is building a future of injustice for a future society, period. Wh so what, the what, happens, what, what happens when the society is yeah. already experiencing a lot of injustice, a lot of unfairness? Mm -hmm. So wh what future do you build for if the present is already broken? Well, the present L is... L look at it this way. Yeah. Stella Nyanzi raises critical questions. Mm -hmm. The midday meal at school. I know um, uh, Bishop Zach Needing here. Mm -hmm stopped having lunch because he says until we have the midnight meal for children, it's something that's been debated for so many years, mm -hmm. for about a decade now. Can government provide lunch for children who go to school? Mm -hmm. The first lady proposes, buy flasks, pack food for your children. Stella Nyanzi thinks that is... Marie a, Antoinette. Yes, Marie Antoinette, you're out of touch. You do not know that people do not have a meal cannot afford to buy flasks, mm -hmm. to pack nothing in them. Mm -hmm. She raises the question of, the president last year promised sanitary towels or sanitary pads for girls. Mm -hmm. In the budget, you're told there's no money for that. She raises the question of, uh, the first lady talks about how do you deliver children to school? Mm -hmm. Walk them to school or take them in a vehicle? Mm -hmm. Don't put them on border border. Valid points. They're not happening. UNICEF tells you the bigger question is poverty we know we live with it. Yeah. So where do you place ethics, values, to having an engaging discussion that actually provides answers and not the same rhetoric from well, political actors? And, and, I'm, and I'm glad you bring up the issue of not the same rhetoric. And, mm -hmm. and that's precisely an area that I'm very passionate about, the rhetoric that we've, you know, we always have these grandiose discussions about what we need to do as a country, mm -hmm. right? But here's my philosophy of life. And... Um, Someone once said um, that he who looks on the inside, no, he who looks on the outside dreams, mm -hmm. but he who looks on the, in, on the inside awakens. And I feel like we as a country have, you know, for so many years focused on the outside. And the outside being what government is not doing. The outside being what, you know, the systems are not doing. The outside being the, the, the macroeconomic policies that we need to put in place as a country. Now, hear me right, that all of that is important. We've got to have the systems in place. Mm -hmm. but here's my argument. That, you know, for any society to to be able to, to develop. And, 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 and this is precisely why we've been having these this discussions for so many years. Why? Because we're not focusing on the inside. And the inside is this, our culture as a nation. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. I'd like to tell you about um, the, the, the Chinese bamboo tree, right? Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure you've all heard about it, right? But, but just no, 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 no. Ho ho hold it there, hold it yeah. there. Don't give me a, a motivation of presentation. No, no, no. This is not. And please, look, 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 and, and look, look, look at the issues. No, 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 no. Look at the <laughs> issues that I've just put forward. Mm. I have told you the situation yes. of girls, especially, and Ugandans generally. Mm -hmm. Why don't you speak to those? No, no. And 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 here's and here's the challenge with yes. us Ugandans. And this is a challenge I've actually encountered with majority of Ugandans. Mm -hmm. We tend to think. <coughs> 
But these principles, th these universal principles that govern us as, as human beings mm -hmm. are just motivational talk. Listen, what Aristotle, just listen, my dear. Aristotle once said that the, one of the greatest wisdoms we can have as human beings is to know ourselves. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and now you've got to understand that you as an individual, you know, are driven in terms of your particular decisions by certain things, mm -hmm. right? Certain things amongst which are the principles, the belief systems, the values, all of which, you know, put together from this construct we call culture. Mm -hmm. Now let me go back to my discussion before sure. you cut me short. You know, here's the thing, that for long we've been having this discussion about all these macro, macro, macro. We've got to come back in, right? Now the reason why we have all these long-standing issues, girls not having pads, um, name it, are broken down health facilities. It's because, that obviously, as you all agree, we, all, we have these individuals in particular places of, 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 um, of, of, leadership. of leadership who are siphoning the money. That is a no-brainer. We all know that. Now, the mm -hmm. ultimate question is why? We've been trying to address this corruption issue for so many years. The thing is, and again, the, the Oxfam report did indicate that we've got to put, put uh, corruption as a high risk. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got to label it as high risk for Ugandans, and here's why. You see, for so long we've been saying, oh, we've got to have this policy in place, we've got to have this, um, this body in place to be able to check corruption, you know. But none of us have come to that place where we've actually realized that, look here, the problem is not in just the systems, mm -hmm. the systems which are not delivering these um, social services. The problem is in our culture as a society. And here's what. We've got to understand that Uganda, and I say this with no apology, mm -hmm. that Uganda is in terms of its culture and the society, it's, it's predominantly an orchard of rotten apples. What do I mean? Wow. Mm -hmm. Period. Not that we're all rotten. Mm -hmm. Please get me right. Not that we're all rotten, but we are an orchard of rotten apples. So you know, meaning, meaning that we have predominant traits of corruption. Remember, corruption is what's actually affecting all these pads, all this blah, blah, blah. We have predominant traits of corruption in our culture, bring it down to our family. Mm -hmm. It's okay for a child to, um, for, for you, say, to be stopped by a police officer and then you give them money and you don't really think about that. Mm -hmm. But it's okay. I mean, it's even in my system as well. But then we've got to rethink and ask ourselves, how are these, you know, basic values that we're teaching our children from the ground level? Let you me know, go back to the question I put to you at the beginning. Yes. Would you describe Dr. Selanyanzi as radical? Because Eunice used the word radical. Yes. Would you describe her as radical? I would describe her as radical in regards to the mode with which she delivers her Amen. ailment. Yes, that is radical. Honor. Yes. Mm. Part of the big debate in newsrooms has been how to present the Stella Nyanzi story. Mm. You saw the headlines that run mm. where First Lady forgives mm. Stella Nyanzi. <laughs> and Stella yeah. Nyanzi responds and says, I don't need her forgiveness. Discuss the issues that I'm raising. <laughs> Charles, I think this is, uh, you can understand the dilemma of the editors. Do you as a mainstream media elevate what is obviously not a normal, decent conversation? And this is the tragedy of social media, of all the magic it has been. It has allowed people, I would, I would call, uh, sort of cowards. People who can hide and lash out and throw bombs in a, in a, in ordinarily... In any village in Uganda, you can't stand up and argue the way people argue in the social media. You can't use the kind of language people use in social media. It's common decency. You don't have to be educated. And, and I think for the women folk in particular, this has always been, they have always been portrayed as the epitome of decency. That's why even the most, you may call primitive, of human societies, the, the human, the women are at least the most covered in terms of their private parts, whether they use the skins of animals or what. Yeah. They have been on that for two hours cover. What about Amuru The womanhood. Women? You know? What about just, Amuru just women? So, 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 so I think that is now the challenge. And in fact, in Tesla, we had what, uh, any discussion, about the kind of discussion that is going on, would only take place in the village well. And they would call it Aiswagadere. Mm -hmm. which is the kind of gossip when they were watching the calabash. Mm -hmm. And it's not allowed of the rest of the society. There are no men, there are no children. Just women can poke fun at each other, what's going on in their marital situations. So, so I think it's now a crisis. How do you but preserve mm -hmm. 
that level of decency, even when you're articulating your rights. You, 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 you raised a good issue, Honor, yeah. there. The question is, and Eunice was mm. uh, mentioning, though um, uh, uh, very softly, mm. you, you, you've seen transformation yeah. over a period of time. Mm. Are more women stripped naked? Yeah. To make a point. Yeah. Mm. Women in Teso, yeah, also in, in Soroti actually, mm. yeah. stripped. Mm -hmm. To make a point. Mm. Yeah. Stella Nyan's initially stripped mm. when she felt some kind of injustice. Mm. And she's now decided to wage a social media war. Mm. So it's beyond hiding behind social media. It is a question of saying, I have concerns, no one is listening, decency is not answering my question. But, but unfortunately, it doesn't work. Because I don't, yeah. think, we, I don't yeah. think women who have done that yeah. have necessarily been listened to. Instead, people divert to either attacking them or attacking the way they have behaved and even abandon the issues. Of course, it's frustrating. I know a lot of people have been failed by the governance systems, not just in Uganda, but across the world, but at the inequalities. And she almost makes a point that at the end of the day, maybe you have to, to wage an individual fight against some of the, the problems. Um, because, for example, if a government is not providing parts, which I think was first of all a mistake to aspire to, because we are not just confronting this issue today, it has existed. So suddenly, why do we assume that society is unable to provide? It's a populist argument that government will provide, but of course it wouldn't. It has failed to provide many other things. So it's also a question of whether individuals should necessarily take government at its word for everything. Doreen, let me come back to you before I come back, I, 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 before I, I, I move to <coughs> units. This, for me, is the first major test to the campaign manifesto that returned President Yoweri Museveni to power. Mm. Because this is his second budget. Effectively, for, 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 his gov for this new government, this would be their first budget because they found the budget that ran between 2015-2016 um, was already on course. Mm -hmm. So by the time government was sworn in on uh, 12th May 2016, the budget process had been completed. So this is the first effective budget of this Kisanja Kona Mcheza of President Yerum mm -hmm. And one of the issues that stick out is the issue of sanitary towels because it was promised on the campaign trail. Mm -hmm. So if people are going to hold government to account and say, you've been in power for one year now, you've made a budget, show us that you're living up to your promises. Mm -hmm. Stella Nyanza has tried to provide that answer. Mm -hmm. Are there any other avenues through which this same question government is being held to account? Again, again, I, I, I've got to go back to, to my personal philosophy, mm -hmm. right? But, <coughs> and again, here's my, my constant question, my constant challenge with all these dialogues that we have, but <coughs> it's us holding government accountable. When are we going to start holding us accountable? When are we going to have that debate that how, how can you and I be held accountable for the girls not having the pads? Mm -hmm. When can we start having that debate? Right. Aren't we having it? No, we're not. Mm. You're saying, how can we hold government ac accountable? And, and here's the thing, that we as a society have developed this external locus of control, right? That we tend to think that it's, it's government that's, you know, the alpha and the omega. It's government that is pretty much a source mm. of our livelihood. And government is not. Government has, within the equation of our livelihood as Ugandan, government pretty much only has to be an enabling factor, mm -hmm. right? The pedestal of our livelihood as Ugandans had, has got to come from us. From us. From the belief systems that you teach your children. From the, let me ask you a question. Look at Kazinda and the amount of money that he has, you know, caused, uh, the amount of loss that he has actually caused in our country. The question is, what would that money have done? Right, obviously the answer is, you know, social services, etc, etc. Now let's, first of all, let me tell you what, psychologists have what they call the ABC of behavior, and that basically means that, you know, Kazinda's behavior, let me put it in context, Kazinda's behavior is pretty much the, the result of the environment that he has been bred in. So now that means that we've got to go back to the root. How has he actually grown? And if you look at the predominant culture in Uganda, we are taught that, you know what, go to school, study hard, get a job, you know, then you'll be wealthy. That is what we're taught. And my question to us today is that, okay, if you teach your children and go to school, work hard, get a job, get a big house, name it, then you'll be successful. What are you in essence teaching these children? You're teaching them that, look here, the end is what is important. 
And this whole, you know, philosophy is pretty much exacerbated by, you know, the media, by the new vision, the, the way they actually profile the triple A B students, as opposed to focusing on the process. And that is a problem. That you, you know what? If you don't teach your children, that is, it's, it's imperative. Yeah, I, I, I'm, 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 in, I'm interested in listening to you on yeah. your articulation of individual responsibility yeah. mm -hmm. in the context of a country like Uganda, mm -hmm. where actually people ask you. For the middle class, yeah. Ona Pito, yourself, and majority of the people will say, actually, there's very little interaction between me and my government. My only responsibility is to pay taxes, mm. and I do. Mm -hmm. The question is, once I have paid my taxes, once I have given my vote, what is government's responsibility? If you advise, that if you're driving to Kampala, put your glasses up, keep your doors locked, or someone will snatch your phone. If you build a home, I don't know where you live, the walls have been rising. Yeah. They add um, secanolia on top, mm. razor wire. They and add a, yeah. a, a private security guard. So majority of what the middle class mm -hmm. or the elite, their lives, is actually a subsidy to government. Yeah. At the bottom side are poor people who are struggling to keep their children in school, provide them a meal, if they're girls, keep them in school for the 30 days of the month, if they need to be in school for 30 days of the month, uh, minus weekends, which is um, about six days in a month, the, the, the weekend. And, and, and you're saying individual responsibility. Yeah. I'm asking, why do I have government? But, but my question, my my question to you again yeah. is, who is the government? I mean, what, what, is, government, what, what, is, what is government composed of? Mm -hmm. Government is basically composed of the individual. Mm -hmm. We've got to realize that government will be, if you're trying to seek for particular, say, for refugees at the time, it could have been Kazinda mm -hmm. in the Prime Minister's office. Mm -hmm. So that is a government, which is why, and again, here's the argument that you've got to bring in the human factor in all this government talk, period. Let me pass it on to Eunice. Yes. Mm -hmm. Eunice, what do you take on Doreen's argument that it boils down to individual responsibility? I choose to defer. <laughs> uh -huh. I guess you can guess that's right. I mean... Citizens are paying taxes left, right, and center, and they have expectations from the government. So we have expectations as to how our resources are being allocated, how they are being prioritized, um, which is taking the largest share. Is it state house? Is it the public administration vis-a-vis -vis social services, vis-a-vis -vis social sectors? I mean, people are getting handshakes where we can't buy a cancer machine. So where does my individual responsibility come in in that space? Am I supposed to go and buy the cancer machine? And I, and I know we are doing all these fundraising to take people to India, to take people to Kenya, individual responsibility. There's a run in Kampala almost yeah. every week. Every everything. week, for, or a car wash. There's a car wash every week. So there's individual responsibility everywhere. But the government is not showing up. We have been saying that when you need the government, it's absent. When you don't need it, it's present. If I decide to strip today at Hotel Africana, the government will be present. When I need it for health now, services, it will be absent. But the question, though, is yes. then, okay, fine, government is present, government is absent, and yes. government is pretty much the individual in that particular docket. So now the question is, how do you get that government, meaning the human factor, the, the, mm -hmm. okay, the individual, look at government as the to be able machine. to show up? To be able look to at to government break it down this way. Break it down this way. way. Yeah. Look at government as health services. I want to go to a hospital next to my home and I can find drugs there. That's government. I want to go to a school and actually the students have midday meal. That is government. That's government showing up. Yeah, but there's an individual who is responsible for yes. siphoning all the meals and, and, yeah. and, and, and if, if there is an you individual know. responsible for siphoning all the money, like yeah. you said, you cited the case of Kazinda. There's an individual supposed to supervise mm -hmm. Kazinda. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's an institution called the Inspectorate of Government. There's an institution called the police, CIID. That's filled with individuals? No. I, I, I mean, I mean yeah, if, if you <coughs> body it down to individuals. <laughs> <laughs> yes, to in. I think uh, really as a mix between the two arguments, it's right for people to hold government to account. But the tragedy, as Doreen is almost articulating, half of it is that there is lamentation in this country. Mm -hmm. It's almost become the biggest preoccupation, mm -hmm. uh, pre preoccupation of the country. If people are, are expecting from government, year in, year out, what are they doing? 
mm -hmm. actually cause government to do what it should do. They are paying tax. No, no, it, it's fine. To do it's, what it's supposed yeah, to you do. can pay tax, and government mm. is not using it apparently mm. the way people expect it to use. So what have they done? Mm. I, I think elections, for example, in this country are often a mockery because it's not because the people in government intend them to. Because the people who are supposed to make choices often make choices without thinking about what government should do. You know, they they can't be promised and then the promises are not honored, but they will still go ahead and make choices that do not reflect their frustration. So I, I think uh, no. that's when you then yes. say, look, in the absence of government responding and the absence of people being able to get government to respond, then some of the problems require individual action. Mm -hmm. to, because you can't lament for decades mm -hmm. when you know that you have perhaps the, the responsibility to, to uh, the capacity to change your situation, you should go ahead and change it. But isn't it the best mm -hmm. way to take responsibility away from government every time you refer to individual responsibility? Because yeah. I, I think no, I think, no, but I but think but it's, but right, it's right. It's right to to refer to government responsibility as well as individual responsibility. Yes, and, and we all know that government is really amorphous, so to say. But and the individual is the individual. Yeah. And, and, so and, 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 and the ladies, you we'll can't leave we'll your daughter to have no we'll, part. We'll, we'll take a yeah. quick break Even now. Because government has made a false promise. We'll so take a quick break now, and uh, <laughs> when we come back, we'll continue with this <laughs> discussion. We'll write back. Welcome back to this edition of The Fourth Estate. And we'll be joined by Angelo Izama. Angelo, very nice to have you after quite a while. Thank you, Charles. We're debating, uh, some people are calling them the Stella Nyansi monologues. <laughs> I don't think it's a monologue. She has got hundreds, now thousands of uh, uh, followers online. Do you think <coughs> her approach is works to get people in uh, positions of responsibility to respond? Uh, I, I saw one Macau University lecturer, um, uh, Dr. Deus Kamunyu Mwezi, arguing that this is the queer theory that emerged some, sometime in the 1990s to bring uncomfortable topics uncomfortable issues to the mm -hmm. fore. Do you think Dr. Selanian's approach achieves this? Uh, just, just before it comes, it, too it, early, it, it works to mm. get the authorities to suck her. At least that <laughs> was. They responded. Uh, there is a response. The truth is, let I me mean, just analyze what happened. You know. I've been following Dr. Nyanzi for a while, um, before she became you know, very public about her grievances, you know, particularly in Miser. I read her initial emails, you know, her issues with uh, the professional conduct of her colleagues. And <coughs> if you approach her as an academic, if these issues hadn't brought her to uh, the public light, she's a very circums circumspect woman who deals with, you know, like her, her choice of, uh, of what to study is, is unusual. She's a sexual anthropologist, respected in research circles. I've met her in a, at academic conferences, you know, she is someone who left to academia is in the business of generating knowledge. Now her protest speech, I think if you follow the last couple of uh, years, has been you know, brought about by personal circumstances, changing circumstances. She felt you know, trapped in miser and victimized, and then the whole matter became politicized and publicized. So Stella Nyanzi is not a, a phenomenon that people say. She's an individual reacting in an in a institutional and political context where other people have also responded. But you know, because of social media, she has become something of, of a sensation, so we are discussing her. People in power have noticed it, um, not because they noticed Stella Nyanzi. You know, remember there was um, that issue of Radio Katwe when it came up about there's someone called uh, Tom Voltaire mm -hmm. or Kualinga. The government of Uganda, actually, I read in Vanity Fair uh, during the Christmas period, is one of the biggest purchasers of uh, malware to spy on its citizens. Mm -hmm. There's an article called Hacking Apple where an Israeli company remotely hacked the IOS, uh, thought to be impossible to hack. Mm -hmm. But that same company provides um, you know, government to government services, including Uganda is a named party. So <coughs> that is the context within which Stellan Yanzi operates. And anyone who makes significant noise and has you know, the attention of the public will be someone they, they um, government of Uganda responds to. Okay, she's, she has a sensational topic. She uh, uses sexual al uh, allegory in, in a very um, artistic ways. 
Uh, but I think let's not take it away from the wider issue that you know, online media has become one of the last retreats of people who are in protest movement. Mm. Mm. Putting this show together, we're uh, divided on whether to focus on uh, social media as the new frontier to air out what some people might think are uncomfortable views. But the fact that Stella Nyanzi is a lady and uh, one of the things that stands out uh, from her, what you call her speech, is a question that affects majority women and has helped keep them down. And uh, one of the questions has been, I, has there been um, some kind of disappearance of the gender activism of yesteryears and that Dr. Nyanzi is raising these issues in, in the way she's raising them now? I don't think she's claimed to be a spokesperson for gender or for women. Uh, she has claimed to speak on behalf of people who are victims of government's incompetences. Uh, she said that you know she personally blames the government for the deaths of her parents from mm -hmm. avoidable mm -hmm. issues, and that's something that affects everyone. But Look she on my she's a feminist. Yeah, I think mm. she's, 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 she's a feminist. She's, 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 she's a feminist because yeah. most women who are in academia tend to be feminists because that's what the gender invites. And uh, feminism is just a prism within which to look at broader issues. But actually, on my way here, uh, my wife was telling me uh, she's an academic and a feminist at that, and a mother. Mm -hmm. And she was like, you know, it, it, my own instincts too. Yeah, women issues, uh, you can't say these are a specific set of issues for women. Uh, all issues are women's issues. And when you find someone who's a well-trained academic, uh, who gets involved in uh, social dialogue, I think it's unfair uh, to put her in a box simply because of her gender. Sure. The issues that she raises are social issues mm -hmm. that are broad, and we should respect that she does so as a professional. Mm -hmm. um, Eunice, uh, let, let's bring it down to the, um, the response of the First Lady. We've only seen snippets of her response. Mm -hmm. The full interview will be running tomorrow, so, but, but there is sufficient material to work with especially on this question, and, and, and where this places government and its responsibility when it makes promises? Um, yes. Before we broke off, we were discussing um, government accountability vis-a-vis -vis individual accountability. For me, this is really an accountability question um, that we should be focusing on. It's, um, I mean, yes, individual responsibilities are good and we must all be individually responsible for our lives, our society, etc. Just yesterday, my village mates were cleaning up the whole environment. Yes, there's individual responsibility. But I think the bigger question is really on government accountability. Are we holding our government to account enough? No, we are not. One, because the main vehicle for that, the political parties are in a bit of disarray. So that is not happening as well. Then the citizens, we've come from a place where we've had citizen apathy for a long time. But now citizen activism is growing to hold government accountable. People are beginning to understand that, yes, I'm paying my taxes, and government needs to actually show up when I need them to show up. So for me, I think social media has helped us to become bolder, to have more courage. Mm. Uh, but the bigger question actually is to create awareness, political consciousness of the issues, and build consensus on what needs to be done. And so for me, that's the beauty, because the issues are now known. What government needs to address is now clear to everyone, but what remains now is the how. How are we going to do that? Okay. How are we going to move from point A to point B? And uh, I think it's growing, and that's why uh, Angelo says that the government is investing in curtailing that space because it knows that it's a recipe for disaster if it's not curtailed. Okay, I, I put a question to you about the response. Do you think sufficient answers were given? Not at all. Actually, the government has been silent, totally silent. I think people have been asking what are the strategies for the first lady. I don't know whether in this capacity she was responding as the first lady. No, as she's as responding as the, as minister, the minister for education. The minister for education, who is the PRO for education. I mean, there's been total absence from the government to respond fundamentally to the issues. Because the first response we had was that I forgive Stella. I don't even know what she's angry about. I think that actually worked the citizens more. You don't know what sh she's angry about. She has articulated what she's angry about. Many people have articulated what they're angry about. 
So I think, yes, we'll look forward to the interview tomorrow and we'll try to be objective, but I think the government needs to do a bit more in responding. L let me just say this. Sure. Mm -hmm. Let me just say this, that, um, you know, as long as we, we keep on, and again, yes, government is important, but as long as we keep on focusing on what government should do, I kid you not, 20 decades from now, we'll still be <coughs> in the very same position. I mean, listen, the 9-11 attacks where the 19 militants caused all the havoc and 3,000 people died. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at all these ISIS, in last year, in about March, I think, they had um, pro uh, profiled about, I think, 250 ISIS videos where majority, if not all the videos, it was only children who were actually doing the killings or, you know, um, holding the heads of the, of the people that executed ETC. So the issue of terrorism, listen, the question is, how do you get an individual who cares for their life to get to that place where they have no, you know, no care for, you know, their safety, for to be able to, to be able to commit all these atrocities. Listen, there is such an issue as culturalization, indoctrination, right? Which which brings me back to the whole issue of the individual responsibility aspect. Let me take it a bit further. That by saying that we've got to be individually responsible, it goes back, you know, to the core aspect of how do you actually indoctrinate, you know, uh, people in society, our children, to be able to get to that place where they understand that, listen, if you're in a position of responsibility and you're in government, you've got to understand that, you know, the government purse, the money purse, the government public purse, is not for you to, you know, dip in and get all this money and work out whatever it is you want to work out for your private life. No, your needs have got to come after the public needs, right? Mm -hmm. So which is where the whole culturalization aspect comes in. ISIS. If you look at, there's an ABC report I was reading, and they said that if you go to the ISIS-controlled areas in Iraq and mm -hmm. Syria, you will find that the very things that cause all these atrocities, the, you know, all these you know, killings, are very much in the environment. They're very present in the environment of all these you know, controlled environments. So what they do is they culturize, they, mind, they, they indoctrinate these children using what psychologists call mind-bending mind -bending indoctrination to get to that place where killing is their new normal, right? So they get to a place where they actually, you know, the kids get to a place where they actually kill, and it's okay for them. Why? Because no, that is their I, new I, normal. I, I, I'm, I'm getting confused here, Doreen. If you don't mind, I'll jump in yes. and make two points, which are <coughs> local. They, um, in Uganda here, we have a long history of child soldiers, mm -hmm. many of them involved in uh, political projects, first here in Luero, then with Joseph Kony and you know, there are many charities in Gulu still dealing with the social mm -hmm. effects of child soldiers. Uh, but <coughs> the methods used by radical organizations like uh, the LRA doesn't take away the political context within which the LRA comes from. Mm -hmm. When there was a war between the North and the South, the political logic of LRA survival is a much wider issue. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the argument you're making that, you know, there are a few bad apples that... Um, you know, <coughs> individuals must act uh, is, is a fairly common excuse for why states and systems fail. Mm -hmm. You find it everywhere that, you know, well, no, you know, this issue here is not because mm -hmm. the system is bad, mm -hmm. it is because individuals are bad. Uh, there's a famous um, uh, psychiatrist mm -hmm. called Philip Zimbardo, I don't know if you know him. Mm -hmm. He's the one who did the Stanford prison experiment years ago. And commenting on why nice American kids from the Midwest could go and commit atrocities in Iraq and be pictured abusing people, these Christian boys and girls, he said, well, it's important not to lose focus on the who of the situation, but look at the what. And his, his definition of evil <coughs> is clear. He says that Evil is blind obedience to order, okay? And that is a systemic issue. Do not offer the uh, problems of the individual as an excuse no, for the failure. No, but if, if God, so let, let, me, let me just say this. Can I just mm -hmm. completely mm -hmm. ask the oh, hold it so that, um, the assessment? Uh, Ono yes. makes his point and then you can complete Yeah, I think okay. I want us to stay on, yeah. the, on the attack. On, on the is, topic. Is it an attack yeah. on the first lady? <laughs> mm. Of course, I totally believe that government has a lot of failings and should be criticized over and over because that's what governments deserve most of the time. 
But um, I don't agree with the personalizing the weaknesses of government to individuals. Because I know, even if you remove some of the individuals who are always pointed out, there is a, system, a, system, a, system, a systemic problem in this country, which is even societal in many respects. I've told, I've told you, Charles, that it's fine for people to castigate President Museveni, and now they're extending it to his wife. But even if the two are removed out of the picture, some of the problems are inherent and they are widespread. So if, for example, government has not delivered, it's not entirely because of an individual like the First Lady. She, she may be so influential that people believe she can tell her husband to do or not to do. But I believe some of the, 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 the helplessness she's also experiencing, even as a minister, is genuine because the, 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 the way government works is, is quite uh, amorphous. And I think to, we need to, to reduce, first of all, the power of government in our society, to reduce the claim of government to do things because it's not going to do them, you know? It so, doesn't that raise a very interesting argument? Um, mm -hmm. W which almost runs contra to what um, Doreen is rising. Mm -hmm. If you take it to individual responsibility, Stella Nyanzi chose to individualize her attack to the person of the First Lady who holds the docket of Minister of Education. And the question is, yes, you're arguing for individual responsibility. So if you take it to that level of individual responsibility, as opposed to accountability of office holders, mm -hmm. You've got you to understand that um, I'm not arguing for only individual responsibility. I'm arguing for a consonance, a marrying between individual responsibility and the systems that are in place. For many years on end, we've been arguing, you know, and our propositions have been, or oh, government has got to put in place this system, this system, this system. We've got to come to that place where we've got to realize that, no, it's not only the government, we've got to work together. Let me give you an example of the Nordic countries, my favorite example. Listen. If you make an assessment of all these countries, they're doing you know, you know, very high GDPs and all. The reason why their GDPs are high is not only because of, of the, the systems that have been in place. The systems are great, right? Um, there is a political will to fight the corruption and all that kind of thing. But then if you look at the Nordic countries, all the research will tell you that, look here, they do have a culture. They do have a culture that marries well with the with, with North zero tolerance to corruption. Mm -hmm. So the culture that is inbred in the homes of all these Nordic families is a culture of no, of zero tolerance to corruption, such as the Janta law, right? The Janta law pretty much presupposes that um, you have got to hold the common good above your individual needs. And they teach their children... And, 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 and holding the right. common good above individual needs is yes. to make sure that when girls did pads stay in class, they stay in class, so that they can be able to stay in school, get an education, and close the gender gap. Yeah, true, yes. true. And, 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 and that requires yeah. that the individuals who hold positions of responsibility mm -hmm. are going to not just mention this as a campaign promise, yes. but they're going to see to it that they deliver on it. Very good. So, and so then the question is, yes. how do you get those individuals to have that perception? Mm -hmm. That is a key. And, and, and those individuals yes. have titles, have positions. Yes. So speak to them. So speak to them, but then I'll speak to us, not just to them. Because mm -hmm. you've got, and again, listen, um, Aristotle, no, I, like I told you, know yourself. The question is, what causes these individuals not to adhere to all the policies that have been put in place? You've got to realize that 90% of all our decisions are driven by our subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. And that is not motivation, that is how we are wired. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, 90% of our subconscious mind, you know, are filled with all the belief systems and values that we take on as children, mm -hmm. which is where the whole culturalization thing comes in and it's very important. Can, can you ground your argument yes. to local examples? Angela talked about local examples. Yes. Speak to a girl in, um, in Kitugum, mm -hmm. in Amuru. Mm -hmm. The parents suffered the 20 years of civil conflict, yes. displacement, mm -hmm. uh, past some of the post effects are the nodding disease. Mm -hmm. Some of the others is that the family is poor, they can't keep, they can't buy the sanitary wear mm -hmm. and get the girls in school. Mm -hmm. If you look at the numbers, um, you, we refer to the Oxfam report. You could refer to the um, Weser report, the Weser report. You could refer to other reports that show school dropout rates. If you're bleeding up to 68%, I think the last government figures are 68% of children 
dropping out of school before primary seven. Majority of them are girls. Yes. How do you keep them in school mm -hmm. and how do you move to close the gender gap, the gender parity? To, to, to achieve gender parity mm -hmm. in the long run. Mm -hmm. yeah. And again, which, which is a question I wanted to ask you earlier, because you earlier on said that um, when you bring up this whole issue of individual responsibility, are you not taking the blame of the government? Mm -hmm. And my question to us here today is, is it really about finding the person to blame or is it about finding the solution, right? What's so the if, solution? You look at, if you look at mm -hmm. that girl in Amuru district, right, First of all, she's not known by any of, you know, all these very big government officials, right? They don't and need again, to know them. They don't need Do to they? know yes. them, right? So then the, the, the solution is this, that if, you know, you have a, a line MP through whom you actually air your views and you actually go to that extent of going to the LC, name it, you do your bit as, you know, the mother of this child doesn't have mm -hmm. pets, right? And you do that bit. The thing is, as the mom of that girl who is in Amuru district, I'm not going to stop at saying, okay, I've done my part, I've let the LCs and the government therefore know. No. The thing is, what do I have in my hands, right? Mm -hmm. If I have a cloth in my bag that I can fold and give to this girl to use as a pad, I'll do that. That is where the whole individual responsibility comes in. That has to be married, right? Mm. Would you agree Look, with, 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 the, with the first lady's call then that you know, parents should uh, provide flasks for their uh, children? Would I agree with that call? I think obviously that call has to be contextualized. And perhaps even you yeah. know, prevent them from riding Buddha Buddhas because they're so dangerous. Because <sighs> yeah, no, 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 I, I then that would be Charles, individual responsibility. That's individual responsibility. Fuck for, to to for, what for yeah. the children. What to are the practical flat? solutions to, yeah. to, to pads which are mm. critical and the girls should have them? First of all, I don't think that a, we have a government system today that can deliver pads. If you cannot deliver other things, can't when you are talking of something which is going to be can deliver ballot, can deliver ballot papers, which is time. based on <laughs> days and which are specific <laughs> and what are these. I think there would be practical <laughs> solutions like, look, first of all, parts current I believe are coming from maybe Kenya largely. Mm. Mm -hmm. So why don't we have One, a factory? One, so you need to have a factory. So how yeah. do you incentivize someone to invest mm -hmm. yeah. in producing the cheapest parts possible? That's where government can intervene. Are there taxes on pads? Maybe they should be removed. Let, let, let Are there taxes let, let, let on the raw materials for pads? Maybe they should be removed. Oh, no, if but to expect it, it, that it, it, you are yeah. going no, to be... I'll, I'll provide some information. Yes. There was a project, I think, that's the project at Makere University mm. to produce pads from local I materials. Mm. Um, there's a project, I think, being um, incubated at the Uganda Industrial Research something, uh, Industrial Research Institute, to make local pads. Mm. There are other initiatives to do reuse and other and, so, so, and so other so what you need now the, the debate the market the is there just a moment the debate yes. that nyanzi rises mm. is not on uh, uh, and the response from the minister of education is that you made a campaign promise last year these girls are moving through those who are dropping out are dropping out where is evidence that you're actually working on this and your argument that that, that attract, promise was, attract, just, just was moment, unrealistic. Attract <laughs> investment yeah. into and this and area. And that's the response we resources. expected yes. from government. That's mm -hmm. the response uh, government I, I should have missing. given. Mm -hmm. Government should have said that we have this initiative at Makere, we have this initiative at the industrial research. They should have told us the programs in the pipeline to address such an issue, other than the Minister of Education coming to say, I don't understand what the issue is about. Well, no, she said so there is no yeah. money. There is no yeah. money provided for that mm. because ministries are suffering a 10% cut to yeah. provide for road infrastructure in Western Uganda, in, uh, mm. in, in the Albertine area. But, but I, 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 I hope of out of this of debate, what, what actual money will not be price. put mm. in the next budget because it will not achieve the desired effect. You will have, have delays in the delivery of the parts. I mean, the girls, you need. To make but impact carriers are costing about, about 3,000. You need to priorities. drive down the cost to 500 if, if you take and it, make sure that families are able to afford them. Mm. It, yes. If mm. you take it to Doreen's argument yeah. uh, about corruption, the response of mm. finding who can produce, who can provide the parts, who can supply them, will take you back to procurement and its related problems. And the next headlines will be running and the next ones will be debating will be so many billions. Four sanitary towers for girls mm. have been stolen. That's what I'm saying. Isn't that what you're going to say? So you need to get it out of government hands. So. <laughs> Look, guys, I think the, the, mm. the way the public mm. debates priorities is all with, with good intentions. You see, <coughs> from the interaction of, of, 
opposition and government that they, they, they all speak the language of the public interest. This shouldn't take away the way politics operate, like Ona is, is mentioning. Corruption in Uganda fuels politics, and um, corruption uh, depends on procurement processes, which now have been bent for, uh, mangled into uh, all, all sorts of things. My argument would be that the, the primary concern of the feminist movement, of which I think Selenyaz is now the... Uh, uh, the, the spokesperson sort of. Um, <laughs> we don't is have a, a spokesperson. Is, yeah, is, <laughs> okay, the, is a poster, poster child, mm. and she would welcome this challenge, I imagine, mm. uh, would be to analyze the, 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 the deep-rooted uh, reasons why our political system is bent. Mm. Uh, for example, we all covered the election here. I was covering the election over, uh, you know, across the pond. Political system they, is bent because they, of the club. The, the, the cost of a, a parliamentary seat Mm? is about 300, 300, 350 million. Mm. Yeah. I had observed constituencies where mm. between the two contenders and their supporters, maybe one t 1 1.5 billion shillings were dropped mm. this is just during the primaries. Mm. There is a price now to delivering the public interest. You've got 420 MPs. The whole bulk of, and I, and I, and I throw this number here often, that the Electoral Commission's role of uh, elected offices was 1.7 million people mm. elected to public office. Ugandans are overrepresented yeah. already. Mm. Now, that is the context and, and within which you know, public services are, mm. are, are ought to be delivered. This confusion um, of you know, who is being criticized for not uh, doing government work uh, and <coughs> the reasons offered by people like Stella Nyanzi and the grievances that they represent. So those, all of these things are, are okay, but the fundamental problem is we have a broken political system that needs urgent reform, and if we do not do it, the people who are engaged in this debate, first of all, they all need each other, both the opposition <laughs> and, the, uh, and, the, uh, and the establishment. They're operating in the same space, and I think that space is outside of dealing with the real uh, questions of the public. Gentlemen, let, is, let me take some messages uh, from some of our viewers and then uh, we'll take a break and pick up the discussion when we'll also be opening it up for our viewers to call in and share what they think. Um, Nicholas Opio is watching us and says, those attacking Dr. Stella Nyanzi have not read or caught by Bitek's Song of Lawino. Like Bitek, who used sexual expressions and poetry in dealing with Western liberal democracy and values, Dr. Stella is using the same tool to deal with the broken promises by the NRM leader and his wife and the futures of our democracies. Stella needs to be venerated, not consigned to vitriol. He says, uh, also those attacking Dr. Nyanzi must read Justice Mulenga's decision in Onyango, Obo, and Andrew Mwenda versus Attorney General on the limits of unpalatable expressions. There are quite many. <coughs> <laughs> Someone says, Charles, pr please protect Eunice. She's speaking for us. <laughs> I don't know who <laughs> us is. <laughs> for the women, for the feminists. Like Someone women. says, like Doreen, <laughs> Doreen thinks because she's so smartly dressed and can afford time <laughs> for a self-reflection when every woman <laughs> in Karamoja, without food for instance, have even the time to indulge in self-reflection. Mm -hmm. This is the biggest joke of the year I have had. We should stop taking women of this country for granted. I, I least expected this from an educated woman in Uganda. Mm. And that we person should <laughs> stop misrepresenting the women in Karamoja who mm. can speak for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I just came back from J Karamoja. Jose Nwabine says, uh, <laughs> why do some people think that when we speak of the word gender, we mean women? On the issue of citizens and government, I profoundly believe that government must do what citizens cannot do, either as individuals or as groups. Citizens also should not acquit themselves of their responsibilities. Mm -hmm. The citizens are like a mirror. When you look into a mirror and it shows you that your hair is shabby, you don't break the mirror. Mm -hmm. You comb or shave your hair. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ismail Musalad, I think he's watching us from uh, Jinja, he says, uh, I don't think the majority of women understand their powers yet. Not until they begin to pull in the same direction, things will not change. And if that does not happen, soon we will continue to see blank checks being issued with nothing tangible in return. Um, uh, someone else says, um, Joseph Burite uh, can deliver their own promise, uh, yes, can deliver their own promise, uh, yet heavily taxing such basic items as sanitary pads 
and tap water. In principle, government deserves no sympathy. Mm -hmm. um, another listener here says, Stella is a victim of male chauvinism and double standards. Instead of focusing on issues she raised, regime apologists are diverting the discussion to her language. Why are we not mad at Mr. Museveni when he talks about uh, the finger in leopard something something? And what about Okot Pabitek's mentors eh? and uh, allegory? Well, Let's take a break. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a break, <laughs> break and we'll pick up this discussion and we'll open it up to more of our viewers. <laughs> Too. Welcome back. Mm. Welcome back to this edition <laughs> of uh, the fourth estate, the last segment. And uh, we're featuring Angela Izama, Eunice Musime, uh, Doreen Kanyesije, and uh, Wanapito Ekomoloit. I'm told we have callers, so uh, can we receive the first caller? Hello? 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 Yes, sir. Your name and where are you calling from? Uh, yes, I'm Julius and I'm calling from Kampala. Julius, keep your question or comment brief. Uh, yes, please. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm glad to tune into a very intellectual discussion, uh, so I do not want to trivialize it into sure. uh, individual, individuals and all that. So I will not discuss Stella Nyanzi or the first lady or for that matter. The, the Minister of Education. So, yes. Sure. So uh, the issues, I think, are, let's put them in context. It's about individualism, individual responsibility, and uh, collective responsibility. That is the state. And uh, to pick on, on, on Angelo's uh, comment about a uh, broken system. Mm. Uh, broken systems, I think, are not... Uh, he, he talked of, I think, reform. I don't think broken, uh, by definition, can be reformed. Mm. So systems have to be remade. Yeah. I don't know by mm -hmm. who, but we have to be discussing okay. that, how mm. our systems are going to be remade. Mm. And also putting in... Uh, that will bring the context into how individuals actually work within that process. Mm. Yeah, so let's go. Uh, let's go. Uh, so I, I don't think we should also dismiss uh, the lady, I think, Doreen, mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. the, really the, the, the fundamentals. Sure. Because in all these systems, they are individuals. Thank you, Julius. Uh, so, yes, so let's put things in context and discuss these issues other than personality. Thank you. Thank you very much, Julius, for your comment. Okay. Do we have another caller? Hello? 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 Yes, please. Your name and where are you calling from? I'm Nancha from Wandegea. Nancha, go ahead with your comment or question and keep it brief. I think from Wandegea. Yes, please. Go ahead. Uh, Nancha, you are listening to yourself on TV. Could you turn down the volume of your TV? Show herself. I'm sure. I don't know why the Madame Doreen came to this. Mm. Hello? Nancha? Nancha, do we still have you? I think we lost her. Uh, sorry, if you can try and call back. Hello? Yes. Hello, yes, Charles. How yes, are you? Yes, sir. Fine, sir. Your name and where are you calling from? Yeah, thank you for the show. My name is Ronald. Yes, Ronald. Yeah, um, I like the way Izama is doing it and uh, on a pito. Mm. I'm not comfortable with a lady in yellow. She has failed to articulate things to the level of our show. Uh, this lady in blue from uh, Akinamama is not speaking, mm. and she has not even given you a chance to express anything. Everything, she knows everything, she doesn't allow you to talk, she's also the other side. Okay. Okay, we'll redress that when we come back, uh, may, may, maybe in the last few minutes. Mm. We'll, we'll see if we provide the opportunity. Uh, Eunice can speak for herself <laughs> and uh, Doreen will. Hello? Hello? Hello. Yeah, yeah, yes, Magusha. Yes, please. Your name, sir? Yeah, my name is Mwine. I'm calling from Barara. Yes, Mwine. Keep your comment or question brief. Well, for me, my problem is just very simple. Is because I am just looking at you, uh, talking about the government, talking about any, some of those things. But my biggest worry hmm. is seeing a person who one time went nude. In mm hmm we, uh, why did we lose Mwine? We need uh, Mwine to please try and call back. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? Do you have another caller? Hello? Hello? Yes, please. Hello, Charles. Thank you very much for picking my call. My name is Maria. I'm calling from Sassi. Yes, Maria. Maria. Yes, Maria. Go ahead. I'd like to... First of all, I'd like to um, convey 
my wonder to why we had you had to bring the re she has views to share Yes, Maria? Thank you. Yes, I see with all these ad hominem attacks. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Doreen. Hello. <laughs> Respond to what Doreen has to say. <laughs> Do we have another caller? <coughs> Hello? 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 Uh, okay. We, we, let, let's bring the discussion back to, to you. Before you say anything, yes. I yeah. communicator, Doreen has been very effective. No, but let, let me, let me just... Let me get feedback, you know. <laughs> you no, no, let, let me just say this as well. Like telling you. <laughs> no, let, let me just say this as well, right? So I've been in this business for, for a couple of years and I understand this, that if you mm -hmm. bring any new view to a society, and here's what Ugandans love to hear, that government is a problem. Mm -hmm. and, government is and a problem. No, 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 government is not the only problem. Government is part of the problem. But you've got to bring it down to the individual as well. And I know that such platforms are very much used to saying that the government should do this, the system should do this, but you've got to understand that the individual has got to come in and play a part. Mm -hmm. So we as Ugandans may not want, that may not be very palatable to our ears, but you've got to understand that the individual aspect has got to come in. The way we culturize our children is important, mm -hmm. and that might not be the kind of um, discussion that you'd want to hear on a political show, but you've got to understand that the reason why we have these political shows is so we can see change. Not that we can have these shows over and over again discussing the same mm -hmm. things over and over again. We've got to have a change. And you see, the, the way we can actually remake the system mm -hmm. is by remaking or teaching new cultures to our children and to our people. That is the only way you'll actually begin to see change in the system. Now, that may seem very new to our ears, but you've got to embrace it. Okay. Yeah. Honor, you wanted to come in. So let me, let me first come to you. And the, you, Eunice, who has been silent, uh, says mm. to the not thing that you need to say. No, the guy thinks that For me, it's up. really... <laughs> <laughs> for me, I, I, I'm a very strong advocate of a mix of mm. uh, not just individual responsibility, but more community responsibility mm -hmm. and government responsibility. I think an issue like uh, the issue of PADS, the biggest campaign should be to bring the price down. You know? How that can be done is to have, first of all, this market, there's no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. The women are the majority in this country. Somebody must be able to invest knowing that it's going to be a profitable venture and the price should drop down. Mm -hmm. I believe our people are hardworking enough mm -hmm. to afford when it's affordable. I don't believe government has the capacity to deliver mm. parts mm. to schools. Mm -hmm. let, let me ask a question. Um, I, I, I don't know if you invested in time in um, finding out. It's the discussion that we're actually missing. What is the price of sanitary pads in, uh, available? How much does government take as tax off of this item, which is essential? And uh, what kind of incentives do exist mm. for those who want to make them locally? Would, would you have mm. that kind of information? I think um, the disposable pads are 3,500. Disposable. Disposable. And reusables yeah. are 7,000. The beauty mm -hmm. with reusables is that you can use them for a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. But, but yeah. reusable, if you look mm -hmm. at the reports we're talking about, the report like um, mm -hmm. the Oxfam report, mm -hmm. where there is an argument that Uganda still calculates its um, absolute poverty numbers mm -hmm. by a dollar a day. Mm. which the rest of the world has since moved away from, to they calculate it to two dollars, mm. a dollar and a half, two dollars per day. Two dollars at today's exchange rate is about 7,000 shillings, isn't it? Mm. So if a majority of the, I, I mean, if, if you have about um, 7.5 million Ugandans who are described as absolute poor, mm. you have another about 11 million Ugandans who teeter between absolute poor and uh, hanging by the edge. Mm you have a total of almost 22 million, uh, about, yeah, about 20 million uh, Ugandans who can be described as poor, mm -hmm. regardless of which index you use. Who is going to be able to afford mm -hmm. 7,000 shillings to buy reusable pads, even if you can use them for how many months? Mm -hmm. Yes. And I, I, think and and I, imagine, and I imagine reusable means you must have some privacy to dry it or whatever. To wash yeah, yeah. You must have yeah. the soap, you must have, 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 have the water. crowded shared houses, mm. they don't have enough water. So, mm. so yeah, Marie, if, 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 if you're living in um, the end of these slums around Kampala, mm -hmm. you need water and you buy it off the tap. And you need soap. You need soap. Mm. You need to buy the sanitary towel, wash it, dry it, 
in a place where you can dry it and be able to reuse it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it will be unhygienic. Mm -hmm. I, I have seen somewhere where they, uh, yes, there is, uh, th th there's a young man and, um, who's working with some women. Uh, I was reading an article the other day uh, where you have to iron them with a hot iron mm. to make sure that all the germs are dead. Mm. So it's, it, 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 it doesn't come cheap even then. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I think this whole discussion is just looking at the symptoms. Mm -hmm. Like Angelo has said, we need to go back to the fundamentals. Why is it that we're even discussing pads, that our girls do not have pads, that our girls spend 20% of a year not going to school because they do not have pads to keep them in school? So I think we need to go back to the fundamentals, ask whether our macroeconomic policies are working for everyone or they are not. And that has nothing to do with individual responsibility. It has yeah. It uh, has but, 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 it, it has to do but with Eunice, what is has, that? I think yeah. Somewhere, it has somewhere something the to do lady with has yeah. Argued, mm. What is the opportunity cost of not providing a pad mm. for a daughter in some of the households? Mm. There are other there are other spending patterns which are mm. obviously fairly irresponsible mm. versus caring for your daughter. So mm. we, we can't entirely excuse mm. individual responsibility. And and the mm. question that the ultimate <coughs> question is why aren't the pods being provided? Mm -hmm. Why isn't that individual providing the pods? And you've got to understand the context within within which I'm bringing the individual responsibility, right? It's why isn't this individual actually moving out of their way to allocate the money to the you know, responsible places? Mm -hmm. And it's simple. It's the way they've been culturized. Let me tell you this. Let me bring it down to the women as well. You know, and I'm sure you'd agree with me that we women are socialized to believe that we should be perfect. You know, you've got to be a perfect cleaner, perfect wife, perfect mom, name it. And how does this play out later on? You know, we've read countless articles by even Sheryl Sandberg, the chief um, executive officer for Facebook, who talks about the imposter syndrome. And her argument is this, that if we women are culturized to believe that we should be perfect, and yet it's next to impossible for us to actually be perfect, we've got to understand that that will ultimately have an impact on us as women. Why? Because at the back of our minds, we know we have to be perfect, and yet in essence, we can never be perfect, hence the imposter syndrome. So the same way, we've got to understand maybe that culture... Maybe bring it down yes. to the Ugandan scene and yes. say, are we valuing boys more than girls? Yes. Is it that parents are valuing boys and therefore they'll keep them in school and they'll not value a girl and say, I have to keep this girl in school and therefore I must provide for her mm -hmm. and ensure that she actually <laughs> has all the necessities. They don't value boys. Yeah. Why do they buy for them? Yeah. So th <laughs> I mean, if we're going to talk <laughs> about girls, maybe because... No, if it's no. true already... No, I, I, I mean it's, if, it's mm. why is it that the, the girl dropout rate is quite high in Uganda? We have to interrogate the because social norms. Because uh, 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 we're now talking about individual responsibility. Yeah. Let's interrogate the social norms that we have in our society Very true. that places a higher value on the boy child yeah. than the girl child. Mm. And therefore, a lot is not done to accommodate isn't that the, the uniqueness of the girl isn't child that where, in isn't the that home. where the government centrality comes in, especially on this um, critical debate about uh, uh, about sanitary wear, that for a boy, even if the the the, 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 the shorts were torn at the back, yeah. the child can still go to school. Yes. They can be stitched together. Mm. But there is a monthly expectation that this family must provide for a girl child, where you move beyond individual responsibility and say these children belong to individuals. Yes, but they are children of the state. Mm -hmm. So if the state think, thinks, like the president said when he was campaigning, that we think this is an important issue to keep our girls in school, then you, need, you move beyond individual responsibility yes. to state responsibility. Someone, someone is, um, uh, just, let me just take a message. Uh, someone says, Joe Osia says, when systems are seen to be individuals, and individuals appear to be systems, the targets of public discontent are inevitably blurred. The crux of the problem is political representation of people and not representation of aggregated interests of the people. Mm -hmm. Joe Osea. Uh, another person uh, says, um, uh, who's this? Who's this? Who's this? I can't find the name, so I'll skip the message. Um, uh, someone says we should bring you more regular on the show. Uh, someone <laughs> thinks okay. we should make you a panelist on the show. Another person thinks 
you are good for an opera win fresh off. <laughs> <laughs> good lord. <laughs> <laughs> One of the richest uh, women. But, uh, but Charles, I want to be pitching here uh, l- 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 that um, for, l- for Ugandan women, Let me read this. Just just a moment. I I think I understand the message, Mm -hmm. uh, even if the person, I can't get the name of the person. Mm -hmm. says, surely, Charles, if Doreen cannot clearly articulate government responsibility and individual responsibility in a given set of affairs, then we may have another Janet in studio. (laughs) Maybe the next time she needs to take a walk in Uganda's countryside or downtown to know that you you can't change a fixated society. Mm -hmm. I pay taxes so that I can be given services that are for uh, the common good. I find it very difficult to disengage a leader who has been at the helm for 30, 32 years, it's actually 31 years, yeah. from the systems and procedures in place. Stella spoke the language government understands, and that's why we have all these key kinds of debates all through. Finally, uh, yes, uh, once Anthony wants us to share the studio WhatsApp number, uh, b- because now she's sending on my private <laughs> phone. Uh, but mm-hmm. the, 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 the producers will address that. Yeah, I think, I think the, he makes fair comment, but I wanted to offer a view here that perhaps it's right that the NRM and not another government is the target of all these um, uh, gender-focused attacks. After all, it has been the most, uh, NRM has been the most pro-gender government uh, mm-hmm. that we have known. If you look at from the uh, debates in the Constituent Assembly that amended the Constitution and state, stated clearly that it, the, the national project was to correct historical injustices against women, uh, their, the affirmative action has become real. And that's why you see the, the, the number of uh, enrollment for girls has gotten to a point where this issue has become uh, highlighted. Uh, but also, you know, it's, it's been a victim of its own inability uh, to stick to its uh, political promises. And, you know, like I said, perhaps it's a good thing that the NRM can reflect on this. But I think for the women movement, one of the problems has been that, you know, gender-based issues have become too much associated with the state. You know, the state is the one that is driving affirmative action. I mean, in fact, driving pro-feminist policies at least in the public space via affirmative action and that organized responses that are based on ideas of uh, what is good for girls ought to be come from pressures that are outside the state and outside of politics. You know, they, there is no during the way, there is no aggregate culture here yeah. in Uganda. So when you say we are culturized in a particular way, you're really referring to how those with, with the elite power project their values. In fact, for much of the rural countryside, like uh, my sister says, they still are dealing with uh, the state valuing their girls more than the society's value them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, There's a person here who says, um, never promise what you cannot give, whether you're government or activist. President Museveni promised sanitary pads during presidential campaigns as if he was an opposition candidate, showing that the ruling government had failed to do so. And when he's reminded of that promise, uh, that the promise is a date. It's instead his best half uh, taking the fire because she's a soft spot. Activists who have jumped onto this issue had previously said nothing about pads until President Seven took up what he was not ready to give. Did he just want votes and got them? Government should preoccupy itself with what it does best. Tax citizens and use, use it the way it's been doing best for the last 30 donkey years. Activists, social medias, lawfers and opposition are not any innocent in many matters. Mm-hmm. Who is that? <laughs> I have no idea who it is. <laughs> and then someone, uh, uh, I think, uh, someone is watching us, I think, somewhere in Fort says, uh, should we only be talking about pads? What about the time children, uh, parents give to their children? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and another person, th- there's another person who thinks um, uh, I should protect you uh, from, uh, that you're being suffocated by Doreen and on a pito. <laughs> yes, you're speaking for them. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies. I don't deserve to have to you this. Another person wants to know. Yeah. <laughs> see how Patriarch is <laughs> playing out. Yeah. 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 What is it? You need to head you. I feel I'm an Africa. Who can suffocate you? Another person says, uh, too much English in the studio. Who is this Doreen? She seems to be detached from reality. Other <laughs> thanks for a good show. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, uh, 
to all the viewers oh, for uh, for sharing <laughs> this. Um, I don't have to protect myself anymore. This this <laughs> feedback uh, from uh, uh, for, for all the feedback and the interest in the show. Um, uh, let's just run round and um, uh, ar 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 around the set to ask the question of um, these issues can be disaggregated, but the reality of this country is that a majority of the citizens of this country, young and old, are women. The fact also remains that women remain largely marginalized um, uh, in many spaces. You can talk about keeping them in school and a parent will have justification to say, well, if I can't afford to keep my girl in class because she's reached that period in the month when she can't be in school, the boy has an advantage. Now the question is, how do you redress these issues in the context of the debate that um, started last week with uh, Dr. Nyanzi and the First Lady? And go first. Let me make two quick points. First of all, the person who said, oh, you know, <coughs> someone made a, a false argument there. Just because Europe 70 raised the issue mm -hmm. uh, doesn't take anything away from the fact that this is an important issue. Mm -hmm. And the response cannot be to Europe 70. You know, the had response has to be to the issue. In, even if he politicizes it and is a political actor and he has got other people who are uh, involved in, uh, in, in competing with him. So the sanitary part issue, which blindsided me actually, mm. is an important issue. It yeah. doesn't matter who raised it. Mm. It doesn't go away. Secondly, we owe a huge debt of gratitude to two social forces, I think. The political forces that well, congregated around the women movement in the uh, uh, mid-90s the ones that allied with NRM in politically, actually, to make uh, focus on gender a major part of Ugandan public life. That's the reason why you know, we have as many girls in school, and let's give credit where it, it is due. If you look at the structure of our new economy, the soft structure of our new economy, that is largely being held together by women in the workplace. And the, 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 the entire uh, services sector, uh, I mean, you just have to go around offices these days, you'll see the importance of, of women. Certainly because of that, it's important for us to focus on how to take the, those gains uh, forward, despite all our political differences. Sure. Eunice? Uh, for me, I'll just say that um, the strength of a society will be judged by the way it treats its <coughs> women, and in that sense, the way it treats its girls. And while today we might look at paths for girls as the issue we are discussing, I think the bigger question is how are we treating um, our women, how are we treating our girls? When you look at domestic violence, intimate partner violence, when you look at issues of maternal health, 19 women dying, continuing to die every day. Um, that means the number's growing, it was 16. It was 16, it's yes. now 19. Mm -hmm. It says something about how we are prioritizing our resources, and that needs to change. Um, I, just a quick question. I'm told we have a mm. few more minutes before we can end the show. Um, are, you, uh, are you surprised that they are the center of this debate, this new debate, are two women in two different fields? Uh, no, I think that's diversionary. Is it diversionary? It, yeah, I think the focus on the actors has uh, created another diversion. Mm -hmm. I think we need to focus on the issues that are being raised, look at the fundamentals. I mean, there's uh, a national dialogue in the pipeline. Those are the issues we should be discussing on how we need to rebuild this society. So I think focusing on the actors can also be diversionary. Doreen. Yes, I, I'd, I'd like to say uh, that well, government you is important. You got quite a lot of feedback. I, yes, I, I'm very good one feedback. Mm. I need to come back. Anyway, yes. um, I'd like to say this. That government is important, mm -hmm. right? Um, the systems are crucial. But we cannot outrule the role that socialization plays, the role that the family unit plays, the role that the church unit plays in regards to how it actually frames our mind, right? So we're talking about all these issues that are not being tackled in, the, in, in our society. We've got to understand that the human factor always plays in that there is a human being out there who is not providing or siphoning the money to, to the right channels. Mm -hmm. So that is why we've got <coughs> to come back to the human factor and find out, okay, how can we start to socialize our people, our children, to be able to understand that, look here, we have zero tolerance for corruption. How can we socialize them? So we cannot you know, rule out the debate and the role of socialization in this whole equation. Honor. Yes. 
Just <coughs> for me, needless to say, women are the engine of societies and families and households. And I, I'm not a big fan of these arguments that tend to separate women from men or to have women problems and men problems. I think they are societal problems. Mm -hmm. you know? And of course, government should stop getting into this tokenism for women. And women cheer it on, you know. Instead of addressing the fundamental issues of women as fundamental fundamental issues of society, I also don't like women to to to, to, to allow themselves to be objects of pity. You know, I mean, mothers I think are the most powerful creatures in society. I mean, they give birth to life. So when they tend to say like the girls should become victims of pity, they should be held. Uh, I mean, just rely on handouts. I think a family needs to take a stand and say their girl is integral to their existence. Whether government is going to support or it's not, they shouldn't. Because, for example, I raised earlier the issue of what are the opportunity costs in some of the households in the countryside or in the city mm -hmm. where parents are crazy. I mean, if someone listed what they spend their money on, you may find there are other things which are less important than, uh, which are less important than parts, but because they are not believing that that is a critical element, then they are crying to government. Mm. Yeah, so I believe women should both be treated as the engine of society, but they should also give themselves that feeling and not be objects of pity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Angelo. Uh, nice Thank to you have you me. back on the show. I hope you can make a little bit more time when you're in town. Uh, Eunice, very nice to have you. Uh, Thank we, you. Yes, uh, people have been asking us where are the women and uh, we need more women to come on the show. Charles was yes. skewered on social media after he had a, a show here about women issues and he had only men. I mean, it was a man <laughs> 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 no, th 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 I thought it was important that um, men discuss women issues so that women can also discuss, like Honor says, uh, the, the, the issues shouldn't be divided between men issues, women issues, youth issues. Mm -hmm. They're society other issues mm -hmm. and that's why we get lost. So thank you very much, Doreen, uh, for making time for the show. And thank you very much, um, Honor Peter Ekobole. Thank you very much to all our viewers for joining us tonight. And always, and especially those of you who called in and sent feedback, and each one of you who watched the show. Uh, thank you very much to our production crew that stay up late in the night to deliver the show to you. From me, it's a good night. Thank you.